Created by Anthony Bezos in the Australia. This is John Flynn. He was on the Australian 20. Why is he on the Australian 20? Well, you read the title, so let's go. John Flynn was born in 1880 at Victorian Australia, growing up in a Presbyterian Christian family who migrated from Scotland because of various reasons, but that's not our focus. He grew up in various parts of Australia, got educated, and in 1911 became minister of the Presbyterian Church. So he was doing okay. You couldn't say the same for many people living inland of Australia. <coughs> also known as the Outback. Ah. Uh... Yeah, I should have gone with that. Now we come to the context. Um, I was expecting a context bomb to drop, but um, oh well. Back in the 1910s, Australia had a frontier, even a few frontier wars. Most of the towns that cropped up were mining towns and farming settlements, which did as you might expect. Though problems differed from town or settlement, there was one thing most had a lack of, a doctor less than 100 kilometers away, with all the potential work accidents, dangerous animals, poisonous insects, disease, loneliness, the sun, and every meme that says this will kill you in Australia, was not good. At that time, the six states of Australia just became a commonwealth a decade ago, and even that long ago, there was still a lot of planning, organising, and red tape. Plans focusing on public projects to connect rural towns to rail lines wouldn't be a thing for another decade or so, which the entire history of Australia's rail line is so complicated it needs its own set of videos. Now back to John Flynn. John Flynn had great concern about the rural towns and settlements inland of Australia. After his missionaries and research in the Northern Territory, he founded the Australian Inland Mission. Their aim was was to minister to the spiritual, social, and medical needs of Australia in the outback according to his biography. They still do these missions and services today, just go by a different name after 1977. After a few years, Flynn and a guy called Barber wrote a book called The Bushman's Companion, published in 1916, teaching first day joint repairs, what to do in case of heat stroke, sudden faints, drinking, yes that was in the book, also how to write a will and perform church services and prayers. It was a very popular book. Now despite all this, the Australian Inland Mission could only do so much and the book was no substitute for an actual doctor. The problem pretty much stemmed from no doctors less than 100 kilometers, but also the response time. There needed to be something to close that gap in response and travel time. In November 1917, John Flynn took inspiration from a letter received from Lieutenant Clifford Peel, a medical student who joined the RAAF during the war, suggesting that medical supplies could be dropped in the outback by plane, some sort of aerial medical service. Unfortunately, he wouldn't live to see his idea in action as he was shot down and died weeks before the end of the Great War. So, for the next 10 years, Flynn campaigned for an aerial medical service. His vision was to provide a mantle of safety for the people, yes, that was in his biography. And his vision became a reality when his longtime supporter, H.V. McKay, left a large bequest, meaning he left it in his will. <coughs> so, Flynn's aerial medical service was literally off the ground. In 1927, a signed agreement between the Aerial Medical Service and Hudson Fish, a founder of Qantas for the AMS, to operate an aerial ambulance from Cloncurry, Queensland. Oh hey, there's a John Flynn Museum in Cloncurry. The first plane used was a Da Havlin DH-50, a biplane piloted by Arthur Haflick and carrying Dr. Canyon St. Vincent Welch. The first call was an emergency of two patients at Julia Creek, about 135 kilometers away. The flight took two hours compared to over six hours on bike or even 27 hours on foot to get to Julia Creek. What's amazing about this flight was the pilot was flying with only a compass, navigating by the landmarks, fence, rivers, and telegraph lines in an open cockpit landing on advice one ray. I think they used clay pans. And the two landed successfully and saved both patients. Interesting enough, one of the patients was treated from a cut to the throat in an attempted suicide. Now, continuous flights were more or less like this over the years, though over time, better engines, established landings, fuel dumps, and better strategic planning would come in. However, in its first year, 50 flights were flown to 26 destinations and treated 225 patients. Damn. So the distance was taken care of and will improve over time. So what about the response time? Well, in 1929, an engineer by the name of Alfred Herman Traeger, who was working with Flynn since the early 20s, sorry, early 1920s, invented and installed the pedal radio in Augustus Downs. What's a pedal radio? Well, it's a home slash bulky portable radio generated by cycling a pedal, transmitting and receiving Morse code. Within a few years, and with other inventions like the Morse typewriter, and 
and the easy access to radios across the settlements. Response time greatly improved from emergency calls, call-ins where you're going in case of emergency, and preventing suicidal thoughts from being lonely in the outback. As years go by, the aerial medical service would go on to continue their purpose. A small snag happened during the Great Depression. A few things happened over time with a few famous uh, cases, but that's not here or there. By 1942, the aerial medical service changed its name to the Flying Doctor Service, as well as having a mixed fleet of planes. John Flynn sadly died in 1951 of cancer. He was cremated and his ashes placed at rest under the Fly Memorial just west of Alice Springs at Mount Gillen. And then then years later, he would be rolling in his grave, as by 1955, the Flying Doctor Service became the Royal Flying Doctor Service, bestowed upon by Queen Elizabeth II in 1955. After her 1954's tour in Australia, she said, <coughs> I have heard so much of the work of the Flying Doctor Service, and the security and comfort it brings to every part of the outback. I express my admiration to all those, past and present, who have contributed to its splendid work. The same admiration came from Prime Minister Robert Menzies, saying the Royal Flying Doctor Service, perhaps the single greatest contribution to the effective settlement of the far distant country that we have witnessed in our time. Okay, I think Flynn is rolling and dancing in his grave. So in the 60s, the RFDS would focus on purchasing their own aircraft pilots and engineers. To this day, the RFDS has helped a great deal of people that not even John Flynn could even imagine. A 24-7 emergency service for primary healthcare for 7.69 million square kilometers. So the area of Australia. So what about the volume? As of this year in 2020, they have helped in the bushfire crisis and the coronavirus pandemic. Granted, this sounds like they're spreading themselves too thin, but damn. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. Please like and subscribe, it makes a smile to my face. And with that... Who's knocking on my door? Who's there? Oh, a letter. Dear Riz from Riz Australian History. We are sorry for not delivering your context bomb for this episode. Due to current circumstances, many pilots and planes are needed in the outback to help the rural areas of Australia more than ever before. Rest assured you, you are free to change the location and where we send your current and next order of context bombs at no extra charge when we are able to. Sincerely, the Royal Flying Doctor Service. That explains nothing. But I am changing the location to reach near my door. P.S. Please read page 89 of the Bushman's Companion for the Sick. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies and God of all comfort, who comfort thee us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them that are in any trouble, through the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound unto us, even so, our consolation also aboundeth through Christ. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or anguish, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Our Heavenly Father, our present help in trouble, we beseech thee to look most full upon thy servant in this house, who is laid on the bed of sickness. May the sickness be not unto death, but for the glory of God, and that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. May he who heal all manner of disease when he was on earth come to this sick bed and speak words of healing, if it be thy holy will, and words of peace, that the heart of thy servant may not be troubled nor made afraid. In patience may he possess his soul. May his days and nights of suffering be lightened by the presence of the Comforter, and the sharpness of his pain be overcome by the power of love and faith. And may this new lesson of our helpfulness and of our daily our, our need of Jesus Christ not pass away without our taking to it heart, and surrendering ourselves in fuller submission to thy blessed will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Is, it, is that it? Am I good? Well, that was interesting. Well, time to go back to play Battlelord.